morning, friends. You're very welcome to our time of worship as we meet to praise God and to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we meet in worship this morning, our desire is to be drawn closer to Christ, to learn from him and to proclaim the gospel, to have fellowship with each other even though we're still separated physically we're very much together spiritually and as we lead into the service this morning I want to uh, play a few verses of a, a, a hymn a well-known hymn powerful hymn years I spent in vanity and pride caring not my Lord was crucified sad today that so many people in the world don't even consider that the Lord Jesus Christ died for them. May as we listen and reflect and even sing along, may it set us up for a time of worship this morning. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that as we come into your presence this morning, we come seeking you. We come to focus on your love, on your mercy, and your abundant grace. And Lord, we pray as we worship that we are shut in with you. That we forget about what is happening outside and all the, the trouble that we're facing. For this moment, Lord, meet with us personally. Touch us, Lord, as individuals. Draw us closer to yourself. And may we this morning look afresh at the cross and the victory that was won on that cruel, cruel cross. And may we learn to stand in that victory Father God, we pray now that you meet with us, minister to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. I wonder this morning, is there anything that you're afraid of? Are you afraid of spiders? 
You're afraid of wasps? Well, I'm not really afraid of very much. I don't like wasps and I, I definitely i am not that fond of spiders. But I think the one thing I would be afraid of is to be caught in a storm in the middle of the sea. I'm not that keen on water. I was watching a film recently called The Perfect Storm and it was about a, a fishing boat caught out in the middle of a huge storm. And I want us, before we talk about today's story, I want us to I want us to watch a clip from the film. I would say if me or you were out in the middle of that storm, we would be surely terrified. Our Bible story today and, and the, the Bible reading today is about the disciples out in the middle of the Sea of, uh, of Galilee caught in a storm. And the Bible tells us that they were so afraid. They thought that they were going to drown. No matter what they did, they couldn't manage the storm. Then, amazingly, they looked up and they saw Jesus walking towards them. Now, they were out in the middle of the, the sea. There was some three mile out. And yet, Jesus came walking towards them, walking on the water. Imagine that, boys and girls. Imagine how they felt to see Jesus coming, walking on the water. But the Bible tells us that they were terrified, that they were afraid, and they cried out in fear. And then Jesus spoke. Don't be afraid. It's me. And that when they realised that it was Jesus, they calmed down and were happy because they knew that when Jesus was with them, that they had nothing to fear. Boys and girls, there's a great lesson in that story this morning. Because Jesus wants to be part of our life. He wants to be in our lives. He wants to say to us, don't be afraid because I am with you. So this morning, boys and girls, I want us to ask the Lord Jesus into our lives. I want us to learn about him and to become disciples of Jesus. Because whenever the storms in our lives and whenever the difficulties in our lives come, Jesus is with us and he says to us, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Boys and girls, I want you to remember that this morning. The lesson is taken from John chapter 6, verses 15 to 29. Jesus knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I. Don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realised 
that only one boat had been there and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but that they had gone alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realised that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man has, will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Thanks be to God. We're very good at looking at the past. Looking back in days gone by when things were more simple when people had time for each other, when there was less technology, less fast food restaurants and more home-style cooking. Those were the days. But it's senseless in a way to live in the past, no matter how good it is, because we're living in the present. We're dealing with what we have in the present we're planning for the future. And we need to focus on the possibilities that we have today and indeed the potential that we have to shape the future. Sometimes in the church and in our preaching, we have a tendency to look only at the Christ of history. And we exhort people, as it were, to imitate the Christ of history. That's not the message of the New Testament. Because the message of the New Testament is a message where we are to live in the power and the presence of Christ today in our lives. That we are to minister the Christ who is relevant today, who is working today, and who is, who is working in, in us and in his people to impact the future. He's ever-present. And that's what we see as we look at the next miracle in the Gospel of John. Jesus walking on the water. We see in, in, in that instance, we see a sympathetic saviour. We read in John 6.15, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself. It must have been an intense time for the disciples to see the sufficiency as Jesus fed the multitude. But now, a situation is arising. The multitude, having been satisfied, having seen what Jesus can do, are now seeking to take him by force to make him, to make him king. This is obviously a concern because the disciples are caught in the middle of this. Jesus, perceiving the situation, he sends the disciples away. He sends them away from the, the danger, from the ensuing mob, so that he can send the crowd away. 
Jesus then returns to the mountain. He withdraws to the mountain to commune with the Father. He goes up onto the mountainside to pray and the disciples, they go and get into the boat as as they were commanded to cross to the other side of the lake. But again, very soon we see the disciples in bother again. They're in trouble again. We read in verses 16 to 18. Now when evening came, the disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat and went over the sea towards Capernaum. It was already dark and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose because a great storm was blowing. Talk about out of the frying pan and into the fire. Jesus had removed them from the possibility of being taken by the mob. But now they're in a worse situation. They're in the middle of the sea. They're in darkness. They're in danger. They're on their own and they feel deserted. The situation that they were finding themselves in was beyond their control. They, they were beyond the point of no return. They were in the middle of the sea. And they were in danger of perishing. How many times does that relate to our lives? How many times have we been in darkness? Have we been in, in danger? How many times have we been deserted by those around us? Maybe even this morning, friends, we feel that God has abandoned us. If that is the case, we can be assured that we have a sympathetic Savior. A saviour who understands. A saviour who desires to step into the darkness to shine his glorious light. Who desires to step into the danger to protect and guide. Who desires to step into our situation to show us That we are never alone. That is Jesus. The sympathetic saviour. But not only is Jesus a sympathetic saviour. Jesus is a victorious saviour. The disciples were fighting for their very lives. In the storm. They were rowing against the wind. They were fighting the waves. And it seemed in all probability that it was a battle that they were losing. In the despair and the hopelessness of the situation, they look up and they see this strange figure walking towards them in the sea. So when they rode about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near their boat. And they were afraid. Matthew tells us that it was the fourth watch of the night. The darkness, the darkest part of the night, just before the dawn. You friends... There's always darkness before the dawn. There were 400 years of darkness before the light of the world stepped into flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. There were four days of darkness as Lazarus was in the tomb before Jesus stepped forth and called him from the tomb. Here we have hours of darkness as the disciples struggle against the odds before Jesus steps in to bring calm 
to the situation. There's always a time, friends. There's always a, a time when Jesus will intervene. And it's always the right time. I'm told that in Egyptian hieroglyphics, the sign of two feet standing upon the water is a sign of sovereign power. Two feet upon the water is a sign of sovereign power. Jesus has sovereign power over the elements. Jesus has sovereign power to command the storm to be still. Jesus has sovereign power to turn five loaves and two fish into a feast. The victorious Christ is equal to anything that threatens to over overwhelm us because he has faced it all. Satan did his best to tempt Jesus. He overcame. His closest friends betrayed him, denied him, fled from him. The demons cast every insult that they could at him. And his enemies beat him, nailed him to a cross and thought that they had got rid of him. And he overcame. He overcame. And today, Christ stands in victory over all. And we in the present today, we can know that victory through him. This is the greatest realization, friends, that the, the lost and sinful soul can realize. That Jesus is merciful in the midst of the darkness. Jesus is mighty in treading the angry waves of the storm beneath his feet. Jesus is divine, drawing near, seeking the fearful soul who looks for him. Friends, Christ is the answer to the storms in our lives. Christ is the answer to the darkness of sin that indeed enslaves every one of us. Christ is the anchor to which we can be anchored to when all around us is a raging storm. Christ brings calm to the soul. Christ brings comfort to the fearful soul. Listen to his words as he approaches the disciples. It is I. Do not be afraid. Those are words from Jesus that calms the fearful soul. Those are words from the Master that draw us closer to him. Those are words from the Savior that shows us his great love. Fear is, is one of the devil's greatest weapons. Fear paralyzes. Fear strips away self-worth. Fear leaves us open to deeper hurts. And ultimately, fear will destroy. 
And the appeal this morning is that whatever fear we have in our lives, let the words of Jesus seek into our hearts. It is I. Do not be afraid. There is no one else who can utter those words and carry up the action to see them through. There is no one else in this world that can say those words and have the power to make it so. That is the language of a conqueror. Only Jesus can say, Do not be afraid of the darkness, for I am the light of the world. Only Jesus can say, Do not be afraid of death, because I am the life. Only Jesus can say, Do not be afraid of sin, because I am the Savior. Jesus is here this morning. He's available this morning. He's able this morning to bring us through the greatest fear, to bring us through the darkest valley, to keep us in the greatest storm where we can be stayed to him. That's why Peter says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Matthew tells us that when the disciples saw Jesus coming towards them, that they were terrified, that they thought it was a ghost and they cried out. And yes, it, it would have been a troubling time. It would have been the last thing that they would have expected to see. And yet, John in his gospel doesn't mention the, res the response to the disciples to seeing Jesus come. He concentrates in the relief of the disciples once Jesus comes. They willingly received him into the boat and immediately the boat was at land where, where they were going. Can you, friends, imagine, can you imagine the relief when those disciples realized it's the Lord, it's Jesus. We're saved. We're going to get through the storm. And they willingly received Jesus into the boat because they ultimately knew that once Jesus was in the boat, everything was going to be okay. That's what Jesus does when he comes into a situation. That's what Jesus does when he's invited into a life. Isn't it sad how many people would rather struggle in the storm than invite Jesus to help? Isn't it sad how many people would rather risk perishing in the storm than to ask Jesus to help? John records the sufficiency of the situation. The boat immediately was at land. They were instantaneously saved from their situation and brought to their destination. The storm was gone. The peril was gone. The danger was gone. The darkness was gone. Peace, safety and tranquility immediately ensued when Jesus came. The message is clear this morning, friends. Wherever we are going, whatever we are doing, whatever we are facing, Jesus needs 
to be in our boat. He needs to be in our lives because it is only then that we can know the sufficiency of Christ's provision. Every one of us, if I was to ask everyone listening to this this morning, do you want to go to heaven? Every single one of us would say yes. That is the destination I want to be, I want to go to. Well, friends, if we want to arrive at that destination, we need Jesus in our life. Because without Jesus, there is no way to heaven. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus must be in our lives, friends. This morning, you're facing darkness, danger, feeling deserted, struggling in a storm. It doesn't have to be like that. Because Jesus is present this morning. And he's saying to us, he's calling to us, do not be afraid. It is I. Let us respond this morning. Let us respond to his call. Let us open our lives to him. Let, let us put our situation as dark, as dangerous, as hopeless as that situation may be. Let us put that position, that situation into the hands of the Savior. And I can tell you, friends, he will answer. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Let that be our desire this morning to seek the Savior Jesus with all our hearts and we can sail safely through whatever storm life will bring. Amen. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you that you are our anchor. You are our rock. You are our helper in every time of trouble. You are our refuge and strength. And Father, this morning as we come to the conclusion of this time of worship, we pray, Lord, that indeed we will see you for who you are. Father, we ask you to lead us into all truth. We ask you, Lord, to open our eyes, open our minds, and open our heart that we would see your glory and that we would seek your face each and every day of our lives. Father, we ask you, Lord, this morning to continually be with us, and we thank you, Lord, that there is a further easing of restrictions. But we continually pray for wisdom. We continually pray, Lord, that indeed men and women will really be sensible each and every day. Father, we pray for our, our children as the controversy and the uncertainty of, of what's going to happen in the schools. Lord, we pray that that will come apparent and in, we pray that indeed we will, we will know your leading. We pray for those who are hurting and we think, we think Lord, uh, uh, also of the, the conflict that's going on all around us as racism has once again reared its ugly head. Father, we pray that every life is precious and 
and indeed we live our lives seeking to do good, seeking to help regardless, not looking differently at people, but looking at people as you would look at them. Loving people. Father, we pray this morning that indeed we become more like Jesus. The resurrected, the living, glorified Lord who is actively working in this world calling all men to himself. Father, may you be glorified in us this day and may you walk with us in the days ahead. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.